Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to our Extended Disk webinar. Um, today's 30-minute webinar topic is how to use Extended Disk to become a better negotiator. My name is Christina Bowser and I'm a senior trainer here at Extended Disk North America and joining me today is my colleague Marku Kaupinen, president of Extended Disk North America. Welcome. Hi, Kristen. How are you? I'm pretty good for this rainy day. Yeah. Um, hopefully we're not going to get another hurricane. But <laughs> um, All right. So let's talk about how to use extended disk to become a better negotiator. Um, where would you like to start? Well, I want to make something clear right away that we are not going to be talking about specific negotiation techniques on this webinar, but we're really going to talk about how to modify behavioral style in order to become more successful in negotiation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and we're going to keep the same theme that we do with all of our webinars. We use the same kind of approach, the four-step approach, to make it very simple, but at the same time make it specific to what we have to negotiate. And who doesn't have to negotiate? Being from a sales to leadership, being a parent, those are the toughest conversations <laughs> and negotiations you have with kids. We, we need to learn to think about how we need to modify our behavior in order to be more successful in that setting as well. Yeah. So, you know, not only does it make it easier um, for your clients, because anytime anything's easier, we're more likely to do it. But it also makes it easier. You know, I've heard from our from our own clients, such as yourselves, that, you know, using this four step process that we continually refer back to has, really helps us as coach. We don't have to overthink things. We don't have to relearn things. You know, we don't have to reapply things. Yeah, that's the idea that once we use the same kind of approach with different type of things, whether it's negotiation or last week we talked about customer service, mm -hmm. when the process is the same, it's much easier to remember and, of course, put in practice. So why don't we revisit the four-step approach right here and put it in the context of negotiation? Um, before we do that, I oh. did forget. <laughs> um, we are recording this in case you need to jump off early or you want to share um, this webinar with your colleagues. And uh, we do encourage your questions as always, but unfortunately, we won't be answering able to answer them live. So please put them in the questions section and we will follow up with you after the session. So Marku, um, let's talk about how um, you, we can apply DISC and the four-step process to negotiation. Yeah, let's get started right away. And what we're looking at here with the four-step process in the context of how to become a better negotiator is that we still need to understand that people are different and who we are and how we negotiate. Remember, DISC answers how we do things. It, we really need to understand that people have different preferences, and if we are not understanding where they're coming from, we cannot be as successful. And of course, that confident self-awareness in the context of negotiation is that we need to understand what are our negotiation tendencies. We'll talk about this in a moment, but a lot of times negotiations, especially when we're dealing with bigger deals, it tends to be a stressful situation. Uh, we may feel pressure. And uh, when that happens, it becomes critically important we know how we negotiate. And of course, we need to identify the style of the other person or other persons who are involved in the negotiation. We need to understand who they are, what motivates them, how to most effectively communicate with them, and really understand what are some of their, what do they need, what do they seek, their fears, what irritates those them. If we understand what those are, we're much better equipped to get to the last and most important step, how do I now modify my negotiation style. You know, and Marku and I were talking about this right before we were live. Um, it's not that identifying the style of other um, individuals are is not critical in all aspects of communication. But when you think about negotiation, um, it's always about getting that competitive edge, the advantage or, or you know, being able to really go in with a clear mind. Um, and being able to, if you have the ability to identify the person who you are negotiating with, um, you've practiced it, you're aware of it, then you do have that competitive advantage that you might need to come out most successfully in that um, setting. 
Yeah, negotiation is a setting where we really need to make sure we are very aware about how we modify behavioral style. And of course, the key there is to understand who the other people involved are with their day styles. Sometimes, ideally, what we are able to do is we are, have some uh, time to identify their style before the meeting, assuming it's face-to-face. -face. Uh, maybe we looked at uh, our previous com communications, be they face-to-face -face or telephone or looking at the emails. You know, we talked about how to help us identify the styles of other uh, people in other webinars. Uh, and if you want to re revisit that, you get some ideas there. But it's really important to understand that we need to know who the other person is. This is one of those settings that it's really, really important. Exactly. So, Marco, can we share with um, our clients on how they're using um, the negotiation section in our um, assessment results? Yeah, I've just in included a quick sample of what the negotiation style section looks like. This is not the entire section, but can give you an idea what we are looking at here. Um, some typically people take this section and they, when they tailor the assessments or when we help tailor those assessments, they include this in the report. So I, I rarely see it as a standalone report. Typically, it's a part of a other individual assessment. And and you know we have about over two thousand of these behavioral dimensions where. where from where we select when we create this, excuse me, these assessments. And this section just looks at how we tend to, to uh, negotiate and, and creating that awareness of how do I tend to do things, what are my strengths, and what are my development areas. Christina, would you mind sharing how you interpret this part of the report? Yeah, just a quick review. So, you know, as we say, you can always start with the standard individual template, and it, they all have these um, what we call behavioral competencies in them. So you can see on the left side, there are these, these lists of behaviors, and in this case, these behaviors are specific to your negotiation style. And to the, to the right of each of those behaviors, you can see a bar graph. And um, there is a box, and that represents your natural style and where it falls in the spectrum for that behavior. So if you can see the ones highlighted here, um, aiming to close the deal without pushing the customer, for this individual, they fall more to the right side, all the way to the right on the more natural side, meaning when it comes to um, you know, aiming to close the deal without pushing the customer, that's a very comfortable behavior for them. You know, we do say um, with your natural behaviors, be careful that you don't overuse them. But then you can look and see um, when it comes to communicating detailed requirements in a positive manner, they're more to the left of the um, bar graph, meaning that that particular behavior when it comes to negotiating isn't as comfortable. It's a behavior that they typically have to um concentrate and use energy to promote that particular behavior. So this would be more of a development area for that person. And in order, if they need to uh, use these kind of uh, behaviors in the negotiation setting, they really need to spend some more energy and concentration to make that happen. You know, one thing about the strengths, of course, we want to make sure we capitalize on strengths, but we want to make sure we don't overuse them. And in negotiation situations, um, that is something that we need to be very careful of because, again, it tends to be a little bit of a higher pressure situation and we really tend to revert to our natural style even more and what I call autopilot may begin to happen. So you need to be careful that you don't overuse those strengths. Yeah, and as Marku had mentioned that, you know, this is not about your ability, but it's almost like we talk about in previous webinars, it's like a roadmap. Understanding this, this is how you naturally tend to negotiate. If you're aware of that, are there any adjustments that you need to make? Yeah, that will help you prepare for the negotiation setting. And you know that hey, this is how I tend to do things. And you really have that very keen awareness of, hey, this is what I tend to do. How do I need to modify that style to make sure that I become more effective? Exactly. And with over, it's actually, I think, over 2,500 behavioral competencies, Marco. Oh, I think don't. you've lost track. Oh, um, he said 2,000. But yeah, there are so many. And these are specifically um, related to negotiation. Um, you know, what I see our clients do is that when they look at the negotiation style, they typically kind of insert that in mm -hmm. some of the assessments they are using, be it individual assessment, leadership, manager, or any other kind of assessment. I think uh, most commonly I see in, in with sales assessments, of course, salespeople have to negotiate a lot of times, but also many times with managers and leaders, it's, it's a quite popular section to report. And again, it's something that very easily can be included to make sure that the employees have that critical information. Exactly. So, Marco, you, I heard you just mention previously that um, 
Negotiations are of, often done in stressful situations. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, I mean, typically, obviously, we are trying to maybe close a deal or accomplish something, some kind of an outcome by having this negotiation. And a lot of times there is pressure involved. There's high stakes. You know, some situations are higher stakes than others. But it is, tends to be a situation where there is pressure. And uh, when we talk about how do we achieve success, is you know, successful people know how to modify their behavior. They are constantly making these decisions about how I need to adjust my communication style, my sales style, leadership style, negotiation style with different kinds of individuals. But because there is often pressure in the situation, um, we need to be very careful because, as I've said in many times before, strong emotions are the enemy of behavioral modification. We tend to revert to our style when we feel pressure. Sometimes we we forget to modify behavior. Sometimes actually we lose our ability to modify behavior because the feelings take over and we are not able to control them. And then we begin to be who we are, often overusing our strengths and really not working on those development areas that could become um, uh, obstacles to our success. Exactly. Um, so since this, you know, as, as Marku mentioned up front, um, we're not talking about you know, providing um, negotiation techniques. What we're talking about is how can you use DISC to enhance your negotiation, uh, your ability to be an effective negotiator. So let's focus in on the DISC styles themselves. Yeah, let's get started with the D styles. And, and I'm sure audience members are familiar with the different styles, D, I, S, and C. But they, you know, D styles, we know that they, they like to be in control. They like the power. And they'll kind of enjoy the battle. So often these stars really enjoy negotiation situations because that provides them an opportunity to win something. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they want results and they want to uh, uh, get things moving forward. So often they enjoy the negotiation. Now, uh, like for example, when I we used to work in banking, my boss, actually a couple levels higher, he was a very successful man in the organization. He was a high D style boy. He loved to negotiate. Go into a situation with a prospect or existing customer, try to negotiate the terms. You can see that he got energized and he was very good at it. Um, uh, sometimes, and this is something that D styles need to watch out for, these styles tend to have a more of a short-term perspective in things. They want things to happen quickly. They want those results to uh, take place very quickly. So sometimes they forget to really think about what are the long-term consequences of a deal or the outcome of a negotiation. So they really could learn some uh, perspective there, perhaps some patience when it comes to um, be in those settings and make sure that they really uh, are actually Take it, even that they are big picture individuals, but they're looking at the big picture in a more long-term perspective. So that's kind of a self-awareness that the D-style themselves can have. It's something that they really need to have and, and they need to think about, hey, they, they like taking risks. Well, sometimes you can be a little bit overly risky in your behavior and you may sometimes uh, negotiate deals just to win something. And when you really think about hey, what, what is actually going to happen as a result of this deal. And, and sometimes the deals that they want to achieve is they want those high, fast results. They want the, those uh, things to happen very quickly. And they fail to look at what is the long-term cost of getting a deal. So again, just need to be very aware of making sure that uh, uh, they modify their behavior. And also, I think these styles, and thinking about my previous boss, uh, he could come across a little bit insensitive at times because he was so focused and so driven to negotiate hard deals. Mm -hmm. And he enjoyed that battle that other people, of course, especially I styles and S styles who are more people oriented, really could get their feelings hurt sometimes. <laughs> and they became emotional in the in the negotiation uh, meeting. And uh, um, they, they responded in a way that actually made it more difficult to achieve those results. So these styles need to make sure that they don't come across too direct, too blunt, to a point where other people get even offended. Yeah, and, and you know in negotiations, as you go through the negotiations, it can get even more heated and, you know, and, you know, maybe that emotion of the I and S style might irritate the, you know, let's just get it done D style and, you know, it, it could go bad. <laughs> yeah, and when both parties begin to get emotion, those strong right. emotions enter this, right. the room, it becomes more challenging for both individuals to modify their behavior. And uh, these styles, because of their, they really want to get those results quickly and they are not afraid to say what they think. 
uh, uh, sometimes they maybe should low, slow down a little bit. You know, we talked about D style, learn to count to 10. Yeah. Well, forget that. But count count, <laughs> count to, to three. Count to three. <laughs> and, and that can help uh, tremendously in negotiation. You're going to slow it down and make sure that you're truly looking at the long term big picture. And then you can make those adjustments in your behavior. Now, last thing, the two D styles in negotiation table, Mm. that that is often a challenge. And then both parties really need to be careful that that they are making uh, those necessary adjustments to how they communicate, how they come across. Because if two D styles uh, get um, a little bit emotional, we know what's going to happen. And it's not going to be a pretty outcome in terms of the the deal being done or the the, uh, agreement being made. So... So need to be very careful when two Ds are in the room. Yeah, I always say um, the D styles, they don't always play well together. So let me talk about um, the I style. So typically the I style, you know, their approach to negotiation is they're all about being involved with people. Um, What they want out of it is they're seeking um, attention and recognition. But when we talk about those strong emotions, that I style going into it, you know, they can be so focused on the emotions that uh, they can tend to lose you know, track of the task or even the goal at hand, and they come across sometimes as being disorganized. Um, So what we want to do in terms of negotiating with that I style is it's important to build in that time to chat. You know, you can't just go straight into, you know, this is what we need to talk about. This is what we need to agree upon um, because you'll lose them. Um, They want to, they want to understand that um, it's going to help them build and achieve popularity, because again, like I said, they're seeking recognition. They like to be perceived well. Um, they're not going to be interested in details. You know, they want to focus on the big picture. That is true. So details are boring for eye stuff, so they tend to avoid them. Sometimes they need to make sure that they pay attention to those details because um, the details can uh, really be critical. <laughs> can be critical, exactly. So they need to make sure that uh, they don't over focus on people and how the negotiation outcome is going to impact how others be, perceive them in the organization or in their team. Uh, so they need to get out of their comfort zone and, mm-hmm. and make that change in, in in focusing more on those details and making sure, or at least get somebody to help you with the details. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't overlook those. And and one thing, um, and I think it's related to the fact that I styles like to be perceived well. I mean, mm-hmm. who doesn't? But for the I style, it's really important they may overpromise sometimes. And thinking about another colleague at the bank, um, great, successful executive, but high eye style that caused her to overpromise frequently. Mm-hmm. And in, to a point where a couple of times I was involved in a situation and I said, hey, can, can we take a five minute break? Because then, then we have a comp- there's no way we can make this. <laughs> there's no way we can deliver on what we are about to talk. Mm-hmm. And then she would realize that, hey, maybe I just got carried away. So I start need to make sure they don't, Get a little too enthusiastic what exactly. they're able to do. It's that optimism, you know, at the time they believe it and the emotions behind it. Um, so, you know, with that, with that eye style, what you don't want to do is, you know, you don't want to go into too many details um, that you'll lose them or bring up too many, um, you know, negative issues because they're the, ov- they're their overflowing optimism. They want to focus on the positive. Um, you want to keep it light, um, you know, focus on, you know, the positive aspects and then um, don't be too systematic. Um, don't be too structured or by the book. They will most likely at that point, they'll disengage or they can become <coughs> frustrated. Excuse me. Yeah, you, you want to keep the negotiation as light as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still getting over this cold. <laughs> um, but uh, make sure you don't ignore them. And you have that little small talk in the beginning and you smile a lot. <clears throat> that will go a long way helping with their eye style. Let's call it opponent this time. Excuse me. <clears throat> Yeah, and you know their their negotiating style will be a lot more emotional and in the moment and even spontaneous. So they may surprise you at times. That's right. <clears throat> now let's talk about another uh, um, people-oriented person or S styles. <clears throat> um, with S styles, what they really do not like is change. Of course, makes them uncomfortable. So sometimes the negotiation in itself can be a threatening situation because that could involve change. Um, but you really need to take a time with an S style. <clears throat> One is you need to make sure you draw out their views, their opinions, because they are not as expressive. And sometimes they're a little bit difficult to read. And you need to understand what they're really thinking. Um, and I think one of the most critical things with S styles is that you don't forget your promises. Because S styles are 
really, really excellent listeners and they can really remember what you told them. And if you forget your promises, that creates mistrust in the eyes of the <clears throat> S-style and they become very uncomfortable. Now, you will not know it because, again, they're difficult to read, but you need to make sure that you are covering everything and you don't pressure them. They want to take their time. Uh, they want to know all those how questions. And I think it's also good to remember that most S-styles have a person they trust that they use the sounding board. Could be spouse, could be friend, could be a colleague. So a lot of times before they make the final decision, they want to talk it over with somebody. And you need to make sure that you understand that and keep it in mind and provide them the opportunity to do so. Maybe ask, do you talk about kind of these kind of decisions with somebody else? And they will tell you, but if you ignore that fact, you can be misguided. And uh, finally, but the, the S style is that you need to have a kind of a plan what's going to happen next. And again, the plan is clear what the next steps are, even if the decision is not being made today, but at least we know that a, a next step will happen and, and both parties understand what those steps are. Exactly. So, you know, with the C style, um, they are about tasks, just like the D style, but they want to make sure going into the negotiation that they are going to make a correct decision or the best possible outcome. They don't want to make a mistake. They want it to be right the first time. Um, so they're going to be very exact. And they're going to be like the S style. They are more reserved um, as negotiators. So they typically won't get heated in the um, discussion. And you may not actually be able to read them, you know, may not be able to observe their thoughts and feelings. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to ask a lot of questions. Um, and at some point, they might seem to you nitpicky or critical, but it's important to give them the information that they need. Um, and they're one of the styles that actually ha may prefer to do things in writing or by the phone. You know, they want as much information even before they enter into the negotiation process. Um, otherwise, you know, they're going to ask you a lot of questions and they're not going to be able to make a decision right away. Um, remember, they want to make the correct decision. And especially on those bigger and more important decisions, um, they're going to want to process it in order to move forward. So um, with the C-style, try to focus on the task at hand. Um, you don't want to spend too much time chatting or be too informal. They tend to be more reserved and formal. Um, sometimes as emotional styles, we might lose patience with, when we're being asked what we feel like um, over and over again more and more information and maybe we don't find it relevant but for the c style it's critical it is critical and you need to if you're not a c style you need to maintain your patience and provide that information because they you really want to uh, give them time to think and decide and they will not make a decision until they feel that all of the information has been provided because as you just mentioned they want to make the correct decision for them it's better not to make a decision if it's not correct one in their view they need to know that hey this is the thing that i need to do and i must do because i have the information and data available that support that is the correct decision so you, 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 especially if an i style for example you don't like the details this may be demanding but you just need to modify your behavior and make sure that they need for information is satisfied yeah, because, I mean, we think about, you know, sometimes we think about negotiation or selling or to gain that competitive advantage means, you know, that we kind of try to dominate it. But we know that especially with reserve styles or even emotional styles, when we push and push and push, the outcome is not usually what we want. Usually the outcome is they'll just say no. <laughs> you know, like I, I don't if you're going to push me, I'm going to tell you no. Yeah, both with S and C styles, if you try mm -hmm. to push them, they will feel uncomfortable and typically what happens is you don't really know what happened. They, you think that, hey, we know what the next steps are, but then they disappear because they don't want to have that um, sort of a battle going on about I'm not either for C style, I'm not getting enough information or for the S style that I don't really know if this is going to be a decision that is going to uh, help my team and it's not going to make me let other people down. And then they tend to disappear. So you need to have with S and C's clear plan about the, what the next steps are. Not saying it's not with, important with the D's and I's, but typically they make decisions quicker because D's want the decision quickly. I's just want to move on to more fun things to do. But S and C's really want to make sure that they are getting the deal they need or the agreement that they need 
So they will take their time and you need to slow down your progress a little bit. Otherwise you will frustrate them. You will may not know it, but it will frustrate them and you're not going to get the outcome you want to achieve. Right. And, you know, what we say is we're not saying that, you know, if you're negotiating with a D, become a D, you're negotiating with a C, become a C. But, you know, we always say utilize your strengths. You have them for a reason. But, you know, the most successful people, in this case, negotiators, they know when their style doesn't work. And at that point, they make those modifications. Yeah, they modify consistently. They're constantly thinking about how do I need to adjust. Some people I see I see have even visual reminders, even their notes they may write it like a modify or, or adjust. But they may have some kind of a, other visual reminders that always keeps in their mind that I need to modify in order to succeed. Exactly. So uh, I apologize. Thank you for letting me know. Someone, f I forgot to forward the um, slide to C-Style. I got so excited about talking about C-Styles. Um, anything else you want to mention before we um, wrap it up? Well, let's talk about, we have a webinar coming up a week from tomorrow, right? And this is going to be a little bit different. I don't get to participate, but why don't you tell a bit more of what this is all about? Yeah, so this is, um, this is a great introductory webinar. If you're thinking about how do I deliver DISC, um, whether it's in an onboarding process, or, um, whether it's with a team or um, an individual. We're just going to talk about essentially, again, the four-step process, but this time we're going to focus in on step one, which is what is DIS and C? How are we similar? How are we different? And if you, um, anyone out there needs um, HRCI or SHRM recertification units, this has been approved for one um, recertification unit. So we have that coming up um, next Wednesday, September 19th? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. So um, you can find out more at our Extended Disc website. Um, if you go to www.extendeddisc.org and in the upper right corner, you'll see an events tab or section. Just click on that and you'll find out more information not only about this webinar, but any of the upcoming events we have. Sounds good. I think I'm going to get some hot tea and honey yeah. to try and get my voice back. <laughs> and stop talking for a while. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Marku. Thank you.